Um, first off, I would just like to thank everyone for coming. Um, I know like a variety of people Adia. are here, both Adia, children, right. adults, and people. Sorry, Adia, just give me a second. I will introduce you. Okay. All right. Good morning. Namaskar. Um, this is Dhira Chaudhary, Anti General Secretary. Um, today's program is a special for all our kids, uh, entire community kids, as well as uh, for those who are interested in publishing a book. So we have three younger kids, I would say, from our own community. Um, they are Miss Jayasa, uh, she's from Washington, DC. Uh, Miss Angira Angisa, she's from Washington, DC. And we have Miss Adya Jha, um, from New Jersey, Adia is our moderator today for this program, and Adia is a ninth grader, and she is a blog writer too, and she has written a book which uh, is very popular, I believe so, and so I want to hand over to Adia, so yeah, Adia, please, over to you, you can start now. Okay, sorry about that earlier. <laughs> Um, so first off, I would like to welcome everyone here to ANTA's Young Authors Panel. So I know like a variety of people are here today, both children and adults, and people have joined from all over the world. So I would like to thank you all for coming, especially because this is really a program that sets a precedent for ANTA. So I know a lot of people here are incredibly excited to dive into the subject, and as am I. So above all, I would like to thank the ANTA Executive Committee here providing me with the opportunity to have an in-depth discussion with the talented authors that have joined us today. So first I would like to introduce our panelists, which Tira Junkle already kind of did. So maybe if you two could like wave at the screen. We have Jaya and Angie Benesha. Um, yeah, so maybe just wave, introduce yourselves. Okay, um, uh, I would also like to elaborate a little bit about the subject matter of today's discussion. So nowadays we are really surrounded by a lot of distractions and technology, not to really mention the pandemic that is ravaging the world currently. I think we've all really turned to methods of coping and rest and relaxation from the stressful life, especially me, considering that this is like my first year of high school and I've begun many new activities that I didn't do before. So for me, especially, I guess reading and writing have always been being able to keep up with the world around me. Um, the process of getting into a book has really changed me as a person. So, so far this year, I've read maybe about 37 books, but really anyone can read, right? So the question I really wanna answer here today is what can you learn from what you read? How can you apply what you see around you in the world to your very own writing? How do you express yourself? So these are really the questions I wanna answer here today. So before we move on to the panelists, I just really want to talk a little bit about my own journey. So three years ago, I was maybe at the end of sixth grade, I had this idea. So I used to watch this TV show called Cosmos by Carl Sagan. And I was just always very inspired by him. As, as a scientist, I always wanted to like follow in his footsteps. And even before that, I was doing, I was making these shorter length biographical pieces. And really, I wanted to express my admiration for Carl Sagan writing uh, like a smaller book. I never knew where it would, how it would turn out, but um, I began the process of writing a smaller book. And as I did it, I really realized that what if possibly I could put this piece of work out into the world? What if I could possibly publish this? And I think that was really a turning point for me. So I, I would write like maybe the most random things about Carl Sagan and I would check out like these giant books from the library and I had no idea where this entire endeavor was going to take me. So really what happened was as I wrote more and more, I really realized that I was gonna get this published. And usually the traditional method of publishing in the publishing world is really you take it to a publisher, you send them like a letter. And um, I think really no one really wants to publish an 11 year old book because that's how, I, how old I was at that time. 
So I, I sent maybe letters of request. Could you take my manuscript to maybe like four or five um, publishers? And I didn't get a letter back from the majority of them. And I think that at the end really like crushed me. I was, I was very demotivated. I didn't know if I wanted to continue with what I was doing, but really as I moved on, I realized that that didn't matter. There were other avenues of publishing. There was not just one way to do things. You don't have to, you don't have to follow the traditional way of publishing. So uh, I did I discovered Kindle publishing and I think that really dull and I realized that wow, me as an 11 year old, I can publish this book and I can send it out to the world and people can see it. Um, I have a lot more to my story, but I really want to keep it short. So basically what happened was I realized that if I want to write a picture book, there has to be pictures. Um, and never was I very much artistically inclined. So I really had to jump over that hurdle as well, how to make art, how to properly put what I wrote in words and express it in pictures. So one day I just sat down during spring break and I said, I have to do this. And then I sat down, and I made five illustrations. And the next summer, as soon as I knew it, my book was out in the world. So I'm not sure if our panelists experience today is quite the same, but I think we'll definitely find out. So um, overall, I think this experience should really just sign, shine a light on the publishing, publishing process and how many of the people gathered here today could publish your very own book. I think we're all very eager to hear from these very wonderful authors. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the program. So um, Jaya and Angie, if you guys could unmute and just tell us all what grades you guys are in, where do you go to school, and maybe what do you like to do? What are some of your hobbies outside of reading and writing books? Okay, so I'm in fifth grade and I go to school at Grand Ridge Elementary. And I enjoy playing violin and coding. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Angie. Uh, what about Jaya? I am in first grade. Um, I go to Grand Ridge Elementary, and I love singing, coding, painting. That's cool. Um, do you think like maybe what you're you like painting? Uh, do you do that like on paper or do you do it electronically? Because I know when I was reading your book, Ketchup and Fries, a lot of the paintings were electronic. So do you do it? on like the computer or do you do it on paper? How do you do your painting? I usually do it on canvas, but I ran out of canvases. So I think I'm starting to do it on computer. Yeah, really when I was uh, illustrating my book, I did it all on paper, but looking back, I think you two really had a good idea to do it online. So you can just put it straight into your picture book. Um, uh, I think there's a saying really that the best writers read the most. Do you too like enjoy reading? How does your reading help your writing? Yes, I love to read and it helps our writing by like teaching us how authors use little hints in the books and how they... Yeah, um, what are some of your favorite books? What's your favorite genre? fantasy. Yeah. Jaya, do you like to read? I love to read. Yeah, I get it. Um, I did too when I was a kid. Uh, anyways, uh, tell us a little bit about your books. So I know a lot of people are, are new to this. So just could you summarize it a little bit for us? Maybe tell us what the first or second. Well, actually, the inspiration Suffle and Sorrel, our cousins. Yeah, how did they inspire you? Like, how did they help you around, along this book? Well, they didn't necessarily help, they just... Yeah, um, yeah, maybe Angie, could you elaborate a little bit on what your, your book is about? First or second, whichever one you want to start with. Okay, so the Ketchup and Fries book, it's about two brothers 
and our inspiration for the brothers, like how they act with each other and what they do together. It came from our cousins who are also brothers. That's cool. Um, well, when you see your characters, like, do they represent anything? Like, I know Ketchup and Fry, like, they're two different characters. What is their journey? What do they do in your book? How are they as people? Or not people, they're not people, but how are they as... They're really like people, and I don't, but that, that was just something that came to mind. Yeah, um, maybe Ketchup and Fry, like, do they represent you guys? Like, do you see any of yourself in Ketchup and Fries? Because I know they are kind of adventurous. Are you guys adventurous as well? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um, so tell me about the journey of the writing a book. So I know you came up with the idea from your cousins. Was it like difficult? Were you a little scared to go through the process? Yeah, because I thought I'd have to make it all on this thing. I forgot. But then mommy saved the day so I could I could just do it on Adobe Illustrator instead of just doing it. Yeah, um, you, were you ever like involved a little bit in the publishing process? Like how was writing the book itself? So writing the book, because we just like, well, we had a lot of ideas so then we could just put it down or like just type it. So it, the writing the book, it wasn't very hard. Yeah, um, did it like take a long time? How long did it take? Because like, I know when I wrote my book, it took me forever because I had to research and I had to, like I told you, I took like, I checked out these maybe like 500 page long books that were written for people way above even my age right now. Like maybe I could understand it right now, but I also had to like read, like I was writing my biography about Carl Sagan. So I had to write, I have to re read his books cause he has also written books. So was that like tough? How, how was the process? Like, did it take a long time? Was it difficult? Were you ever like, oh my God, I don't have any ideas. Well, it did take some time because most people think that you can write a book really quickly, but it actually takes some time. And I think it took a few months. Second book, because we had, we didn't have a lot of time on our hands. Yeah, I know like you published your book maybe June last year, right? Your first book? September. Oh yeah, so did you write it during lockdown? Like how did, COVID help you? Did, did it really free up time during the summer or during? Yeah, it did. But now since I have to have school, I can't really get that much time. Yeah, I completely get it. Um, So can, do you think like anybody can write a book? Do you like think you need some kind of quality to write a book? And do you think any of the kids here today or any of the people here today could maybe just one day sit down and write a book? What's your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, if you keep working on it, then you can write a book, but some people like start writing and then they just don't feel like it later. So they don't keep writing it and their books never get published. Yeah. Did you experience any maybe hardships when you were writing your book? Did you ever feel like, I don't want to write, write this anymore? Because I know when I was writing my book, after I got those rejections, I really felt like this wasn't something I should continue. It just didn't, I didn't see the point in it anymore. And, I, and I'm not sure if you guys have a similar experience, but maybe could you just let us all know if you ever felt demotivated or you felt like you didn't want to do it anymore? Well, sometimes we did actually, because there are some parts that are really hard. And then when you come to that, it become it feels like you don't want to do it. Yeah, do you like know maybe why that happened? Did it ever stop you? Were you ever maybe bored or did you not want to continue? Because I know we all experience hardships in the things we do, especially in anything I do, I always like get really bored at some point and I feel like quitting, but if you have to keep on going, you know? So like, did you ever experience it from stopping you from writing? Were there any kind of like breaks you took? 
Well, yeah, we did take breaks, like, sometimes. And then we would go back to it. And, well, we just did the hard things. Yeah. Um, Jaya, do you maybe know if how long it took? So, like, from start to finish, how long did it take? Second or first? Uh, both. Just tell us both about both. So, in total... Okay, I'll just... So, the first one took about two weeks. The second one took, like, one year because we didn't have much time. I told you. Yeah. Um, do you think, like, this first, the first one, it took two weeks because of a specific reason? Maybe, Angie, could you answer that? Okay, the first one did not take two weeks. It took, like, two months, but... <laughs> Well, and the second one did not take one year. It took closer to two weeks. So conflicting accounts from both sisters. Yes. Um, uh, do you think maybe one took, which one was easier to write, the first or the second? And which one did you have more fun writing? Well, the second was easier to write because the first one we had to come up with the idea. We have to figure out how they looked and we had to like start writing a book for the first time. And then once we started the second one, we had an idea of what it was like. And yeah, yeah I think the second one was more fun. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I wanna go into a little bit into the publishing aspect. Maybe if your parents are here, they might be able to answer this, but like, how did you go through the publishing process? Like how did you put it through Amazon? What's that like? Because I know maybe some people here wanna publish books, and they would really just like to know a little bit about the process. I, Jay, you're raising your hand. You can do it. So I think we first went to Kindle and then got it published. And then after that, they always they always don't reject us. And then I don't know why, but they don't. Um, and then we go to Amazon, and then Mommy does something, which I don't I don't have a clue. <laughs> yeah, Angie. Okay, so it's just put on Amazon and then put on Kindle. So people can buy it. Um, I'm not sure if your parents are here, but maybe just for our audience, I might be able to explain it a little bit. Um, basically what happens is that you put it through Kindle and um, it's called, I think, Kindle Direct Publishing. And when I first did it, I think it was like a really difficult process because no one in my family knew how to do this. And I was just sitting there alone on my computer trying to figure this out. Um, but basically you can put it through Kindle Direct Publishing and Kindle Direct Publishing, they review your manuscript and if it passes, you can put it onto the Kindle store. Um, and then you can choose your prices, what you wanna price this book, if you wanna make it available for Kindle Unlimited. Um, I think that's really the process. Maybe if your parents are here, they might be explain, might be able to, to explain just a little bit how their process was. Yeah, hi, this is Chakarasha. So I help the girls publish those books. Um, yeah, like you explained, it's the same thing. You you know you submit the manuscript. They primarily look for like technical issues. They don't really tell you if there is grammatical problems. You know, um, so as long as it meets the requirement, um, you can publish on Kindle. And then if you want to print, you choose what kind of print. You know, you have already formatted your book according to whatever printing options are available. Was it ever difficult? Did you ever experience like roadblocks in your process? You know, I published my own books a really long time ago when Kindle, uh, it used to be called Create Space. It was not even um, KDP. So, um, and the pr process even at that time was pretty similar. So I had gone through it. I have published um, three books already um, on Kindle and the printed versions. So. Uh, I was familiar with how it works. So um, when we did these books, it was, pro I already knew. Yeah, uh, one more question. Do you think it's, there's like a difference between writing a picture book and writing an actual full textbook? Well, not textbook, but like a book that doesn't have many pictures. Is there any noticeable difference? Yeah, um, and this was our first time. I helped the girls a lot with, they had the concept, but they also don't have the um, physical, you know, like even um, the texture to work on um, 
we we made all the pictures on illustrator so you know they were not even familiar i had used illustrator for a really long time so i can use illustrator but the girls were still learning so um uh, it that was i think making those pictures uh, did take time um, and it you cannot make those pictures and write the book and have it published in two weeks that's a steve jaya's version of idea of time but <laughs> um but yeah you know you have to pay attention to details and um, you know coming up with these characters you, even when you're just writing i wrote i have written non fiction as well as fiction so when you write fictions you have characters in mind you know how they look how they behave and everything but um, putting them in picture of course you have to you have to i guess um, bring life in them you know so it uh, it is different it is different just writing text versus writing uh, books with pictures um and coming up with all those pictures in the beginning um, we didn't even realize how how frequently we were going to be using those pictures so um, i guess we were you know that was our first time making picture books so we had to sometimes come, re like create that again so um, all those things yeah um if you don't mind me asking like how much were you involved in the process of helping the kids along this journey like how did you help in the art did you help with the writing how mu how much were you involved so i would i would sit down with jaya and say okay now what happens next and then she will come up with this idea okay you know she had she already has the idea what happens and sometimes um, that um, feels like childish you know i mean and i know it's a children's book so sometimes i say maybe we should do this way sometimes she agrees sometimes she does not agree so if she did not agree in certain situations okay fine and if she agreed then we work together on kind of figuring out um what the story should sound like some certain sentences should sound like um so i did help her um, kind of refine um those uh, uh some of the dialogues or you know the ideas um and also um trying to not make there were certain times she she reads these books that are for middle school students so she has some of these things that i didn't feel comfortable a 5 6 year old would want to kind of read like scary or oh, the bully is <laughs> going to do something so those kind of things i try to tone it down um other than that um, pictures i did help with the pictures um they needed again the concept is hers how they look like what they are doing what they are holding what kind of what color including the hair style and everything but um, you know in making those pictures i i had to help them yeah um thank you so much for that uh jaya and angie do you think you guys ever maybe disagreed on some subjects was there ever conflict because like me and my sisters i know that if i had to write a book with them we would we would clash definitely so was there ever any conflict between you two were there any disagreements maybe about the direction of the book yes because so i thought like it sh something shouldn't happen and then jaya would say no i want this to happen so it was kind of like we had to choose something yeah could you give us maybe like a specific example of that in the book maybe okay so i didn't like part of the idea in the second book um or actually i don't remember which book this is in it might have been the first but when there's like snakes and then there's the mural i didn't like it because if the snakes get chased like i felt like it shouldn't be like that i felt like there should be a better reason or something yeah i completely understand about like the sorry about that <laughs> the conflict that might come along with writing a book with another person and i think yeah definitely i would clash even with my mom 
because she would always say, that's a bad idea. And I'd say, this isn't your book, this is mine. So I think we would always really clash on that. Um, so I know you, you two said that you were readers and writers. So I, this is a little unrelated to books, but I really just wanna know, what are some advice, what is some advice you have for people in this audience about reading? Like, how do you, how do you deal with difficult words when reading? Uh, what books do you guys read? I think we really, I really wanna discuss like reading a little bit. Okay, so when I find a difficult word, I either look it up or ask my parents. And so Jaya just discovered the Warrior series. So she's reading that a lot. And I'm also reading that because I like it. So, and I also like the Land of Stories and Harry Potter and Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Olympus and all that. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to, I didn't read a lot of Warriors, but I knew a lot of people who did the Cats book. They're like cats. And I really did love Percy Jackson. Maybe Jaya, uh, do you have any books you like or recommendations you would give? Because I know everyone loves reading. Obviously the Warriors, that goes first. Um, and then I think I would give my book because I think I like it. <laughs> Yeah, I think we could definitely recommend your uh, your book. It's free on Kindle Unlimited, and I think there's also a physical copy. I'm not very sure though, right? Um, but yeah, I think definitely in the audience, if you want a book recommendation, you should definitely read Jaya and Angie's book. Um, so what did you enjoy more, the writing or the creation of the art? So which was more difficult? Um, maybe Angie, do you want to answer that? So the art was more difficult because we had to like draw the main thing and then we had to keep editing it. And sometimes when I make art, I do something and I know that something's wrong, but I can't find out what it is. So we have to find a way to fix that. Yeah, um, so could you maybe provide examples of that specifically? Or maybe Jaya, what did you think was harder, the writing or the uh, art? What did you like more? I like the art more. Yeah, um, did you like a specific, which one was more fun to illustrate? Uh, the writing, like the first book or the second book? And what do you what you were good at? Second book? So let's see, drawing these shapes. This is second book. No looking at the words. This is the tent. And then here's a really, really good underwater thingy. Yeah. And as, as you can see here, stars. Yeah. Well, actually that's not one of them, but okay. I don't know if this might be possible, but could you maybe read us maybe a few pages out of your first book? just so the audience can maybe get a little bit of a taste of your book? Well, the first book, well, it's very dirty and I forgot where it is, but I think- yeah, it's downstairs. Okay. You can try the second book as well, I think. Okay. okay, I'll do it. Catch and Fries, book two, Jaisha and Tarasha. Copyright uh, 2021 by Tarasha, all rights reserved. Oh, actually, here's the first book. It's just not for resale. But okay. And the peaches are there. Once upon a time, there were two siblings. One was named Ketchup and another was named Fries. Ketchup was the younger brother and Fries was the older brother. Ketchup and Fries were not just brothers. They were each other's best friends. And both brothers had special powers to save the world. Ketchup had the power to save the world with his magic ketchup slides. Fries had the magic had the magic fries power. He could shoot magical fries from his head and from his hands and turn them into weapons against bad guys. But neither brother could save the world without the other brother. They needed to work together to make their magical powers work against bad guys and girls. That 
I think that was enough because that was four pages. Yeah, I agree. Um, maybe uh, because you guys showed a little bit, I might. I just found this. My mom found it. This is my book. Um, I wrote it some time ago, but this is the back. It's just a picture of a galaxy. This is the front. I'm not going to really read a lot of it, but um, as you can see, these are a few of the pictures. This I was never like amazing at illustrating. This is like the 1939 New York World's Fair. So I was never very amazing at illustrating, but I really enjoyed this. It was all done with watercolor. So I think that was a little interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a little bit of my own book. Uh, okay, moving on from the show and tell of the books. Uh, how long, um, what is some advice you would give to kids maybe in the audience about how to publish a book? And I know there are some kids who are younger than you, some kids who are older. So maybe just like tell us a few things you would get, tell other people about writing a book. Like what was, what is some advice? Okay, so first, before you send it to the publisher, make sure there are no like, little errors because we sent it to the publisher and we noticed a lot of things and sometimes when you get that copy back that is for you to edit you miss some things so you have to be really careful and also make sure you've had a lot of people like read it and like it and take like if they don't like some part, then you can ask them how they think it could be improved and keep trying to improve your work and don't feel bad. Yeah, thank you for that. Jaya, do you have any advice for people who are um, looking to write a book? First of all, check your drawings. Like we made a mistake on the, the flower. I drew the flower. It was a big mistake. There was a tiny dot, but it looks big because the flower was big. It was it was on the left or right side. I forgot which side, but it was a tiny dot. It yeah, Um. maybe after, this is kind of related to that, but maybe after reading and writing the books, was there anything you wanted to go back and change? Like, was, was there any regrets you had maybe? Because I know when I wrote my book, I think... I would definitely have changed a few of the illustrations, but I think that's 2020 hindsight because I'm looking at this three years in the future, but was there anything you might change about your books or something you regret? Well, yeah, we would fix some of the drawings because I once re read the book again and then I found like tiny, little things I mean not tiny little things but there were some things with the drawing that needed to be fixed yeah um I agree like I think I definitely would have fixed the drawings like I said before and maybe I would have fixed some of the writing as well uh so what is your favorite part of the books like is in your books is there any moment you really just loved writing or you really loved illustrating um maybe share on that a little bit So we really liked doing the illustrating where you have to, so because if you just have to, so I actually think the most fun part about the illustrating is when you have like a basic shape and then you have to change little things about it. And then eventually your thing that you drew, it looks nothing like the shape you had. Yeah, um, Jaya, do you think you have any thoughts on that? Uh, your favorite part of the book, your favorite thing to do? Like, what was one thing you really liked illustrating? Mac and noodles and the plane. Or let's just say the cover. Yeah, what was the process? Was the cover any different from like the rest of the book? What was the process of making the cover? How did you guys choose that? Well, I don't really know, but 
but I think Sissy can answer that. Okay, so we didn't really make the cover. It was just a bunch of artwork from inside the books that was put together. So, and then it looks actually really cool. So. Yeah, um, I agree. I think your color cover is just very, very good looking. Um, it really captures the person who's looking at it. I think that's what most important covers should do. It should really bring in the reader's attention. And I think your cover really just did that. So um, what are you planning on doing in the future? Are there any future plans for the series? Are you guys planning on writing more books? Jaya, you can unmute and... There are a thousand books. There are going to be a thousand books in the series. Hey, Jaya, you know that you can't make a thousand books. Mommy said we could make a thousand books in the series. Well, let's go with a hundred then. A hundred is still too much. I You're going to be writing that. books all year life. I don't care. Um. So Jaya thinks that you'll we'll, there will be 100 books in the series. Um. Angie, do you have any thoughts on that? Okay, I think there should be no more than 10 books. Okay, that's quite a difference. Um. I know on your author bio, it said that you, you're working on a little bit of a longer book for older kids. Um, could you maybe tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so there are four kids and they have to save the world because there was this evil organization that stopped time. Well, I mean, that was trying to stop time. They didn't really stop time yet. Yeah, how far are you into that? Like. Do you have any, an estimate about when that might end or when that might be published? Because I'm sure our audience is very eager to hear um, about your next endeavor. Like next year or something. I think it's going to take one year. Yeah, okay, I guess we'll all be counting down in the audience. Um, what do you like most about your characters? Uh, who's your favorite, ketchup or fries? Fries. Jaya, what's your favorite? Well, I'll just say I can't decide, though I like ketchup better. Yeah, I agree. I feel like choosing between characters would be like trying to choose between siblings, for me at least, because I wouldn't be able, or like parents, like choose between your mom and your dad, because I wouldn't really be able to do that, because I put equal work. But thankfully for me, in my book, there's just one character and not multiple. Um, so in the future, do you guys see yourself writing uh, less like picture books, maybe more text heavy books, like other than your 100 book series? I know you've kind of already answered this question, but Jaya, maybe do you see yourself writing any other books in the future that are more text heavy other than your 100, long ser 100 book long series, Catch Up and Fries? came up with another idea um beaver's magic i think that works do you have like a little bit of an idea about what beaver's magic will be about so there's this beaver i think i'm going to name him kevin okay that's that's a that's a, just a random name and um he can he can predict what happens in the future but sometimes he accidentally changes it and you have to solve he has to solve these problems to to not change it like that. <laughs> Angie's asking in the chat, what about Mia and Melody? Is there any other book we don't know about? I'm reading a book on Night Zookeeper called Mia and Melody and apparently Sissy just said it in the chat. Yeah, um, I think we're all waiting with bated breath for your next installment of the Ketchup and Fries series. And also the next story, um, next story you guys come up with. Um, with that, I think we've really concluded our questions. I think from this webinar, people should just really be able to take away just a little bit of a, about the publishing process. And we really got to know Angie and Jaya today. I think that publishing is always a little bit of a difficult process, 
but as long as you push through and like Angie said that you don't give up it really can be the best thing that could happen to you. And not all of us have to write picture books. We can write more. We can write entire books. Um, this is a little bit off topic, but I know published book, self-published books have recently been gaining popularity, especially in the book community. Um, the self-published books have, for example, have entered the chart. So there is a future for self-publishing book, self-published books. And I think there is just no shame in wanting to publish it through Amazon. And you can always get royalties from that. You can always start something new. Um, with that, I really want to move into, oh wait, Jaya just said, Mia and Melody has 6,000 words. It'll probably come out on Night Zookeeper next month. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, me and Melody, I, I, I'm just writing book one. That'll be book two. It's called Me and Melody. Fiona the Flower Fairy, and then there, I can't explain everything because lots of things happen. Too much, too much. Yeah, don't spoil it a little too early. Um, so thank you guys. Um, I think we really had such an amazing conversation. And once again, thank you for coming. Uh, now we want to move a little bit into the question and answer section. So anybody in the audience, if you have any questions, just shout them out right now. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, anybody, you guys have questions for Adya, uh, Angie, and Jaya, please post your questions on the chat box or you can directly unmute yourself and then ask your questions. Um, I see Angie, Jaya, and Adya, you guys are excellent. You know, I mean, at this age, you guys have published a book and we are just reading your books. So that's the difference. Um, Jaya, I see your books, uh, you know, I mean, the list here that you have, I don't know, I mean, Jaya and Angie, did you guys publish those books uh, collectively? I mean, both of you or just the individual ones? Either of you can answer, Jaya or Angie. I don't know what you mean by that. So did you publish that books yourself? single or you come i mean wrote that books with jaya in combine um adia can you uh yeah i think what he's really asking is that did you two work together on this book or did you write it individually um maybe tell us a little bit about that the process of working together well yeah we did write it well i mean i gave I didn't really write it. I just kind of gave ideas and then helped with the editing and that and helped with, I already said gave ideas, but yeah, and I helped with the ideas in the art. But yeah, we did work together on them. We didn't write both of them separately. Yeah, um, maybe Jaya, could you answer this? How, what was like the balance in the in the process of writing this book, who wrote more? How how did that go? I think my sister can answer this question because I'm not really understanding. Yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, I guess uh, Angie already kind of answered this question. So, does anyone have um, more questions in the audience? Um, yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jaya and Angie. So I have a, it's not a question. First of all, like I'm Animesh, um, indirectly related to Anta and uh, Adya knows who I am. So just out of curiosity, like, uh, like what, at what age did you feel like that you are capable enough to, to write a book or, or or like when did you decide that, okay, it's high time that I have been reading books for say like three years, four years. And now I think I'm comfortable enough to actually pen it down. So at what age did you guys realize that, okay, it's about time to step up the game and actually enter into publishing a book? So Six, when I was six. 
Yeah, I actually had the idea of writing a book before that, but then I never, well, I wrote it and then I never really finished writing it. And then I started writing and like again after some time and I kept writing. And nice. I, wait, I think, well, it wasn't just that I wanted, so it was just, I had a bunch of ideas and then I needed a way to keep the ideas. So I wrote them down and then I thought of writing a book, so. Nice, so I guess, yeah, it's kind of organically grew with age. So you had ideas, you, you wrote it down and when you were uh, like comfortable enough to write a book, then you actually got into writing. So what inspired you, like what inspires you on a daily basis, like writing, writing a book, of course, uh, that requires a lot of talent. Um, and uh, I was sharing to uh, this panel and, and you guys have done a commendable job. So what inspires you guys like to write the book? Because majority of us in the audience, uh, we are not writers. You guys are the authors. You have published books. And in future, I'm pretty sure that you guys are going to do some amazing job. So what inspires you on a daily basis to, to write a book? Well, so sometimes our dreams help, like we just have a dream and then we remember it and we have a great idea from the dream. And sometimes we notice things like, I don't know if I went for a walk and then I see um, a really nice flower that looks like it's glittering or something. I might write about a magical flower or something. So, and sometimes we just sit and then an idea comes to you. Right. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Um, I guess you are Jaya. How about you, Angie? I think Angie answered that question. So, okay. How about you are there? Like, mm. Do you yeah. see yourself writing a book or like at what age did you feel like, okay, I'm ready to, to write a book and, and what inspires you? Like, because uh, do you go through a lot of books and in the process you feel like, okay, I have some ideas coming up. Why not pen it down and, and publish the book? Yeah, I think I've always had a lot of ideas. One thing about me is that I have always been less of a creative writer. I've always like leaned towards bi biographies and analytical writing. So I've written in the past a lot of short pieces I've won awards for. Um, but I think that anytime I have inspiration for writing something, I just open maybe a notes, uh, maybe open the notes app and just write my thoughts and ideas. And I think about being a writer, you don't have to follow through with every idea you have. It's your work. You are in charge of what you do and you don't have to live by anyone else's whim. You can just write down what you want to. There's nothing that you have to publish everything you write. So if there is a word of advice that you would give, uh, now you are uh, like 13, 14, right? If you have to pass on a word of advice to young budding writers uh, not writers as in a as in a as in a kid who is um, who is trying to uh, who is going to school say like a four five six year old like what would be that one piece of advice that you that you would give them if they aspire to be an author in in future um oh well I'm 14 and I think like I haven't been around, like been writing for that long, but I think definitely one thing I've learned so far while I have wrote written is that you don't have, like I said before, you don't have to publish everything you write. You don't have to 
help do what you want. I think mm -hmm. if you want to write that book, sit down and write that book. If you want to write that writing piece and submit it to a competition, sit down and write, write that writing piece and submit it to a competition. If don't feel ashamed that you're self-publishing your book, if your book is out there and if your book is on the market and if your book, people are seeing it, I think that's enough. Even if no one reads it, mm -hmm. the book is still out there is still very important. And I think for me, especially like I opened up how many people have bought my book very recently because I wasn't keeping track of the sales or the consumption rate of my work. And I realized that so many people have looked out, have checked out my book and have looked through Kindle Unlimited or through Kindle Borrowing and have just, even just for free. And I, it doesn't matter that I'm not getting a large amount of money from it. it. It's that people are reading my work and people are enjoying it and people are reading it well. And that's, that's what's important. And I think that's what I would tell any young kid as advice. Very cool. All right. Uh, thank you, and Miss Ananji, for your questions and then your queries. Um, we are moving to the almost. We are uh, the end of the program. Uh, but before that, I would like to ask one more questions with Angie and Jaya. So, um, Jaya, I know you are, uh, I think, five years or six years old and on the first grade. So. How, how? I'm seven years old. Oh, seven years old. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Okay, seven years old. Okay, so uh, Jaya, when are you planning for your next book? I think it'll come in like two months. Two months. Okay, is that the third series of the same book? No, 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 the third book of the same series. Okay, cool, all right. Um, Angie, just uh, this question is for you. So you say that you uh, got that um, concept or uh, you basically helped with the drawings. So how did you make that drawings? I mean, did you make that on a piece of paper or did you make that on a computer software or how did you make that, Angie? Well, I helped the drawings like sometimes on Adobe Illustrator um i can draw like good not on on paper and stuff but i drew it on the computer cool thanks Cindy. thanks jaya and obviously the big thanks to adia um all you guys are excellent you know um we want to give you a big thanks uh from inter and we are at the end of the program. And before ending, we would like to request our inter president, uh, Mrs. Aprita Haji, to put some words and then uh, conclude this program, please. Hello, girls. This is Aprita Jha, <clears throat> inter president, which you just learned from the general secretary of Enta. He himself is a very talented guy, and that's why he is the general secretary here. So. Yeah, the moderator of the event is my daughter, Adia. Adia is 14 years old. And you both were so amazing. I'm so excited to hear about the journey you both have gone through. And I'm so inspired myself that wish I can publish my own book. And uh, as Adia has mentioned, she, was, she had her own share of issues while writing the book but then she finished it, it's in the market. And yesterday we pulled up the chart and saw the sales of the book and she had been selling it uh, very well. So, you know, as a mother, I feel amazing, but the best part is trying that you both, the way you both thought that, yes, it's the time to write a book. And this should not stop because I'm so happy to see Jaya's enthusiasm that she is ready for the third book for the series. And since we have bought your book through Kindle, we are looking forward to reading the third book too, because I read it too. It's uh, quite an impressive work, Jaya. And Angie, you're so sweet. And I'm seeing uh, my three daughters in you both, very, very bright and very level-headed girls. So that is another good qualities I'm seeing that you both are amazing. Um, all-rounded children, and big thanks to your mom and dad 
and your dad is a friend of mine and that's how I came to know about his Facebook posts about your books and I was thinking in my head that if you can come in a program can talk about the books so many kids from our community can publish their own books and these days publishing on Kindle Amazon is uh, much easier than uh, going to a traditional publisher it requires a lot of patience and all so thank you all three girls very inspirational and uh, it's it's worth watching uh, you know even after the program is finished you have given out a lot of amazing tips to the community and the moderator Adya, you were uh, phenomenal Dheeraji and all the audiences I haven't seen uh, you know, you turning on your mic or, you know, you could have, you know, taken part by asking, uh, you know, questions, but your participation matters a lot to us. And Jaya is yawning, uh, you know, she, it, it's, <laughs> it's tiring session because it was power packed, right, Jaya? So I wish to see you, see you sometimes, uh, you know, in coming future, because I'm, I want to give you a tight hug. So, take rest and keep writing, keep reading. And that's how I inspire my children to read, read, read so that you can write so easily. So thank you to uh, Dr. Binesha and uh, uh, Tara for bringing the girls to the communities program. This is what we do every day. Thank you so much, Adya. Thank you, Jaya. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Dheeraji. Thank you everyone who has been listening uh, to these girls and supporting their endeavors. Thank you. Bye.